Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Hindi from AndroidAuthority.com, and Google just flipped our world upside down with their developer preview release of Android O. So let's take a look. All right, folks, so let's start with the visual tweaks. On the surface, not much is different. The home screens, app drawer, Google Now, the quick settings and toggles, and all of that jazz is pretty much about the same. I have a Nexus 5, so I don't have the Pixel launcher. I imagine those with a Pixel probably do. Nevertheless, it looks like Android O is going to be the fourth version of Android in the material design era. Things are not as they seem though. The notifications look the same, but they now include a new feature. You'll be able to silence notifications for an individual application for 15, 30, or 60 minutes. Unlike the do not disturb mode, which silences everything with a few exceptions, this one only silences notifications for that one app. The biggest changes come in the settings and oh boy did they change a whole bunch. The front page of the settings app is far more simplified than prior versions of Android. A lot of the settings such as the keyboard, developer options and others now rest inside one of these new categories. Similarly, things like the lock screen and the security have been bundled together to save space. There is one notable exception to this new rule. Originally, Bluetooth and NFC used to live in the network settings. Now these have their own little section called connected devices and the cast option is now all also there. Unlike in Nougat, there is no side drawer that pops out anymore, but the system search does still work. Also, the developer options and the system UI tuner are still accessible the exact same way as they've always been. They just now show up under the system section instead of right there on the main settings menu. Things look a lot different, but most of it still works the same way. It's just a matter of finding your way around. Now let's move on to some of the new features. Okay, these are things that you should be able to sink your teeth into right now. Unfortunately, there is a lot more planned than there is actually available, but we'll quickly glance over the stuff that you can play with right this very second. Oh, and just real quick, before we get into the rest of the stuff here, we're just gonna mention really quick that the status bar now shows more things. It's not really a big deal at all, but it's there and it's my job to mention it. Like most of the features in testing, a lot of what you'll find is in the system UI tuner and the developer options. For starters, you'll be able to define shortcuts on the lock screen yourself. That means you can have it open to your phone and your camera like it used to do, or something like your favorite game and the gallery app or whatever. The choice is completely yours. Also in the system UI tuner is the ability to change the layout of the navigation keys. You can add buttons and actually move the buttons to the left or the right side or even compress them in the center if you want to. I'm no expert, but I'm going to wager a guess here and say that this is for larger devices to make one-handed use a little easier. I could be wrong though. In the developer settings, you'll be able to access all of the new Bluetooth codecs that Android O will support. They include aptX, aptX HD, and Sony's LDAC. You can configure little things like sampling rain and some other stuff, although most of it is for the LDAC. It doesn't matter which one you use because it all sounds better than the crap we have right now. You'll also be able to access native support for home screen badges. For those who don't know, those are the little numbers by the icons that show you if there's something in the app for you. They're accessible in the application section of the settings menu. Okay, folks, this one's just a little bit complicated. Android O has changed how you install things from unknown sources. Previously, you could just tick a box in the settings and then you're good to go. Now you have to manually give permission to the application you downloaded the APK from in order to do it. For example, if you download an APK over Google Chrome, you'll have to grant Google Chrome permission before you can install the file. It's a little thing, but it definitely helps with security. There are a couple of things that I was unable to test myself. Apparently, there is the option to change your device theme. The option rests under the display settings, but as you can see here, my Nexus 5X just doesn't have it. This is most likely for Pixel owners to check out, and right now it's essentially just a light theme and a dark theme like we've seen in years past. Oh, and applications now have something called notification channels. For instance, Facebook could have a notification channel for just likes and then a notification channel for just comments if it wants to. You can now control those, however, applications actually don't use this yet, so you really can't play with it. Finally, we will now mourn the passing of a feature that has been removed. You can no longer add the battery percentage to the icon, and that actually kind of sucks because I always used it. Just like Android Nougat, some of the best stuff is chilling out under the hood. I'm going to round all of these up really quick because they're either there and you can't see them, or they have been announced and not yet added. Hold on to your seats because this is gonna go quick. 
The big new feature is a new method of controlling background processes. Without getting too far into it, applications won't have nearly the freedom that they used to have when running in the background. Applications will have to rely on the job scheduler to get things done instead of doing their own thing. You hear that, Facebook? Recess is over, you battery-sucking bastard. Android O will also have adaptive icons. That's really just fancy talk for many different icons so it can be shown as a square, a circle, or triangle, or whatever without looking messed up. Picture in Picture is a feature that showed up on select Android devices in Android Nougat. Starting in O, every device will be able to use it, however application developers will have to be the ones that add support before it can be used. Android O will also feature better support for hardware keyboards. Finally! There is a new autofill API that will let password manager applications more easily fill in things like the email or password when logging into apps. In other words, LastPass is going to work a lot better. It will also support a wider color gamut. It was noted that this is not native HDR support, but rather just more colors. App developers will now be able to use whatever font they want in their application instead of whatever the phone says. This is either going to rock or it's royally going to suck. You'll also find support for neighborhood aware network mode on Wi-Fi. This will let your device communicate with nearby Wi-Fi devices without actually being connected to a Wi-Fi network. WebView multiprocessing is now officially a thing in Android O. Don't worry about it though, because you'll probably never actually use it. Finally, it was reported that there have been many optimizations made to the Android runtime or ART. Essentially, apps will run faster and better. Okay, it's time to throw in a towel and call it a video. There have been maybe one or two small things that I forgot, but that's okay because my buddies over at AndroidAuthority.com are doing a whole series on Android O called Diving Into Android O. I have that linked up in the video description below, and you should totally check it out if you want to learn more about any of these features. I am going to address one final question that I know I'm going to get asked. Is it okay to use this as a daily driver? Hell no. The Google developers have expressly stated that this is nowhere near stable enough to be run as a daily driver. Additionally, if you're on the Android beta like me, Google is going to try like hell to get you to roll back to Android 7.1.2 where we all apparently belong. Unless you're tech savvy and don't mind a bunch of problems, we don't recommend this one just yet. And that about does it for this one, folks. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get the latest Android news and review videos as soon as we release them. Check out that Diving Into Android O series because they worked a hell of a lot harder on that than I did on this video. As always, thank you for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.